Welcome to Coffee, Eggs and Inspiration. It's a weekly show that goes out over YouTube and as a podcast over all of the major podcast channels. And each week I get to sit with an inspiring person and listen to them tell their story and share it with all of you. This week is no different. I'm joined by Percy Ascot. Welcome, Percy. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> really, really happy to uh, have you here. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a little bit intimidating, honestly, because Percy's an actor, uh, <laughs> amongst many other things, and, uh, and, and I'm a complete amateur, as uh, you will know from looking at my stuff. I'll give Percy the, uh, the uh, customary introduction. Um, Percy's an actor, a YouTube content creator, uh, a founder, so all of those things rolled into one, a very interesting mixture. Born in Zimbabwe, but raised in, uh, in the UK, in England, grew up in England. Uh, a uh, graduate of the Brit School. Uh, for those of you who follow my channel, you may have seen Stuart Warden on yes. recently. Stuart's the principal of the Brit School. Yeah. Very interesting place in, in Croydon, just south of London. Uh, Percy's been in uh, a number of TV and uh, films, uh, and uh, too many to, uh, <laughs> to list out all of them, so I'll just give the highlights. Wizards and Aliens, or Wizards versus Aliens, I suppose it was. Yeah, yeah it was a yeah. big battle, wasn't it? Uh, 2012 <laughs> to 2014. Uh, Youngers, which was an E4 series. Uh, Mandem on the Wall, actually, that was Percy's show, and we'll come back to that uh, comedy show. Uh, the Weekend, a film. Casualty, The Innocents. Um, numerous short films in the 15 to 20 minute range, and you can see all of those listed out if you go to Percy's Wikipedia page, which I'll uh, link below. Uh, very interestingly, at, at Brit School, um, started uh, playing around with production and um, came up with this concept called Mandem on the Wall. Um, and uh, that actually uh, was pitched uh, and almost got onto, uh, onto TV, but um, uh, a last minute glitch meant that it didn't. And, and actually, that was a great thing because it led to the, the yeah. birth of Percy's current. Um, business which is called The Wall of Comedy. Uh, very popular uh, series, a sort of a platform for uh, different comedians to uh, show their stuff and, and do different forms, of, um, different forms of entertainment. So we'll talk about that. Uh, and, um, uh, and I believe that's been picked up, or there's an option anyway for uh, Channel 4 to take yeah. elements of that on. So we'll talk about that as well. Yeah. Uh, what, an amazing, uh, what an amazing range of things that you've done in such a short period of time. Thank you. I'm going to ask you, first of all, how you uh, developed this interest in creative arts. Where did that come from? What age were you and, and how did it come about? Yes, yes. Um, so I think for me, if I can recall, I think the first moment that I felt as though I wanted to be a part of the creative arts was when I was 11 years old. Um, my mum tells me a story of me performing on my school play and um, I'm basically reciting everyone's lines. So I'm not just doing my own <laughs> script, I'm, I'm also saying everyone else's lines that, you know, they might be forgetting a few lines. And just mouthing them? Yeah, yeah, I, know, I was actually that. saying these out loud, so I think the audience were probably getting quite annoyed at me. But I mean, I was so, I can't remember, but I, was, I guess I was so passionate that I was able to learn just not my own, but also theirs. And um, I played uh, Mowgli in Jungle Book had such a great time and um, didn't really think too much of acting at that point. I, I actually was into sport. I loved playing football and just I was a, I was a kid who just used to run around and stuff. So um, it wasn't until I was probably about 14 years old that I, I knew I wanted to be an actor. And it was my dad. He always used to say to me, um, son, you know, what do you want to be? And he used to always hit me with that question. I wouldn't be able to answer it. but. I understand so much now why he would ask me that question at such young young ages because um, if I could understand, if I knew what I wanted to be at fourteen then I could at least have the building blocks towards you know getting into start that preparing for it yeah basically and yeah. that's when the Brit School um, idea came along so you developed the interest before the Brit School and that led you into the Brit School yes. aged I guess 16. 15, 16. yeah 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 so um, from uh, my school at Woodcote High. Uh, I had a, an incredible, incredible drama teacher that I for, forever will be, you know, um, just grateful for. But she inspired me to really. What's pursue. her name? Uh, her, her name is probably changed now, but her name was Miss Pittam, and then she got married. It's Mrs. Beatty, but um, she really made me feel comfortable and uh, allowed me to express myself. And it wasn't even just um, about acting; it was also about just as a, as being a person and growing up. So I used to just hang around in her classes and just 
you know, tidy up the, the costume department if I could, because I just like spending time with, with my, my teacher and my class and stuff. So um, because of her, it, was, it, it made me really believe that I can get into yeah. the school. Well, shout out to Mrs. Beatty. Yes. Uh, isn't it amazing how these teachers in our lives sort of have such a mark? Yes, and, um, yes. And that, of course, led you into, uh, into the Brit School. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your experience at the Brit School. <laughs> Craig, I was, I was probably, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't look quite my age now, but when I was 18 years old, I looked so, so young. So I probably looked about 12 years old, and there's pictures to prove it. I was like five foot three, 12 years old, looking like I had this big baby face. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to the Brit School, I think for a lot of students, it was this thing where they didn't know I was in their year group. And um, I remembered sort of the Brit School being so different to a school that I uh, previously was at. But different the, how? The different because you can't call your teacher by the f a first name basis, you know, and also down to what you wear and clothing. Like, I just didn't feel as though this school as a culture needed to sort of, you didn't need to fit in. You, you right. being yourself was, was fitting in. Came, and came as your whole self. Completely. Yeah. So my first two, three months I spent um, literally going through different outfits and different looks <laughs> because it was the, it was the first time I, I, I felt just liberated to be myself. So I was trying to, you know, work out who, who I was. And so I'm very thankful for the school because of that culture. They allow us to just be ourselves and because of that I was able to just make certain choices that I felt passionate about. So what did you use to call uh, Stuart Warden, uh, the principal? The thing is, Stu Stuart, the, the story with Stuart, Stuart is that um, I, I pro maybe because because Stuart was my, my teacher. Stuart he was, was your teacher He was my well. actual teacher, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, not just my teacher, he was my form tutor as well. And I remember a story where I came in, to, I was coming to school, I was travelling from Croydon to, to the school, it's in Croydon, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't be late because I, I live 30 minutes away, but I was still being late. And so I remember Stuart putting me into his office and he didn't really tell me off. He just, he just said, he said a few words and he just said to me, just, just don't be late or whatever it was. And um, it, it stuck with me and I really wanted to prove to him that, you know, I'm not going to be late. I'm, I'm going to turn up and also show him that I, I should be here at the school. So. Mr. Warden for me, Stu, like, uh, he gave me my fu the, fun the fundamentals and the foundation of being an actor and also the, the work ethic as well. Because it wasn't just about talent at school, it was also about, you know, who are we in terms of how disciplined are we when it comes to our training. Those professional standards. Completely. Be, yeah. 100%, yeah. 1000%. I remember talking to Maya and Jada Bruni, I don't know if they were at school at the same time you yeah. were, but uh, they used to travel from East London. I think the trip was... Uh, like 90 minutes each yeah. morning, you know, as, yeah. as much as 90 minutes anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you who haven't seen it, I, I would encourage you to have a look at Stuart Warden's interview. He's, um, he's quite the uh, force of nature. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, uh, you're at Brit yeah. School towards the end, Mandem on the Wall starts. Uh, yeah. Tell me about that. So before we uh, are finishing Brit School, we, we're, to, we're kind of given this option of whether or not we want to go to drama school or university. And so myself and my best friend, business partner now, Javan Wade, uh, we did a, a number of plays together, we, you know, quite tight. We had this really cool bond and we just were speaking about our, our future and our choices. And so we both had the same idea as, as we're both thinking the same thing, where to be an actor, we just didn't feel as though a degree would help us. You know, it was more about actual experience and, and getting out there. And um, we'd, you know, done our training at Brit School, so we wanted to have uh, an attempt at the industry so we both did a part-time course at the school they offer this year 19 course yeah, yeah 14 course yeah, not, not, yeah, 19 four, yeah 14 course where it's part-time um but that allows us to then also do like a part you know have a part-time job and also audition at the same at the same time right. so in that period i was probably yeah 18 years old now um we were then working out okay who do you, who, how are we going to break into this industry and it wasn't until, I think it was like the summer of 2011, um, myself and Giovanna had this like ambition to get onto YouTube, but we just didn't know how. We were just always talking about co creating content. And um, we, we went to this, this showcase where me and him both performed this, this comedy set, this comedy duo set. And there's this other comedian called D, and we watched him perform, and it was my first experience into stand-up comedy. And I fell in love with the performance. I was yeah. absolutely in awe. So was Javan, and so after the performance, we all uh, met up backstage, got net numbers, and then we said, "Look, let's meet up next week, the, the week after." We did that, and 
honestly, on that day, I think we were talking about ideas and what to do, and we were going to create a, a set. So we was going to have our own YouTube channel, he was going to have his YouTube channel, and we was going to come together towards right. the end after we both sort of build up our, our you know, our, our audiences. Went to get some lunch, and then on that walk to getting lunch, the idea of Man on the Mall popped up. It was it just hit us in this flash because when we was doing our research and looking at content at the time, a lot of young people weren't watching TV as much and there was nothing for them, nothing was offering them on TV. So we wanted to fill that gap. We wanted to bring back what we had in our childhoods onto, on, in terms of content. And so we come up with this thing called Man on the Wall where it was about three boys who sit on a wall and just talk about their everyday uh, life right. events. And uh, we were just put in loads of comedy bits and the, the London riots happened that year. Yeah. And so we wanted to use that topic of discussion and find light-hearted moments within that and that was the first episode and um, mm -hmm. we got a, t a team together we pulled a few friends made a few, a few phone calls wrote the script built the characters and all of the stuff that we were doing we didn't know how to do it we, we were just learning on, on, wow. the, on the job and learning on the process we, and doing we, everything doing everything we were yeah. producing everything and, and writing everything and we actually filmed our, our first episode three times because the first time we made a lot of mistakes second time same again and we was like, okay, cool, we have to do this again. And, and you know, the team were just, you know, frustrated, annoyed, but we, we knew that we, we had to get this right. It had to be perfect before we can release it onto YouTube. And um, How long were the episodes? Uh, the episodes, I think for the first episode, uh, that was probably about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 that's minutes, that's yeah. reasonably long form content for it is, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we, we weren't just thinking about this as just a YouTube show. This was mm -hmm. a TV show in our eyes. Right. So there was no difference between it being online to TV. So we were thinking about the branding of the show. We thought about the, the theme music. We thought about, uh, we've, we've got a slogan called, uh, mm -hmm. the, the kids at school would sing it. it was, who's that jamming on the wall? Man them. Who's that jamming on the wall? Man them. Who's that jamming on the wall? Man them. Man them on the wall. So that was like a, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air had, had, you know, his theme tune yeah. in terms of Will Smith of, you know, you know the opening start of that that series Very but we wanted the yeah. same thing with our series yeah. so we would take all of these sort of secret su success and all of these clues and, and and put them into the blueprint of our our, our show amazing and it, and it uh it took off yeah and um it became quite big and yeah. and then you were approached by one yeah, of the it, tv it, tv company yeah so we we got to about the fourth episode, and it would actually, it, it was a hard process. Um, it, it took us about a month to actually film and edit and everything like that and, and release it. So it was a, for it was a single episode. For a single episode. It wow. Was, it was draining. And at the same time, I was working on the Wizards vs. Aliens show. So it was busy. So I was filming Monday to Friday in Cardiff, and then I would travel back to London and shoot the Man on the Wall stuff wow. on Saturday and Sunday, and then go back to Cardiff. I did that. Must have been exhausting. It was How so. How do you keep all the, the, the lines? <laughs> <in your head? laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, I just just ambition, hunger, and I just I, I I could feel and see what we were doing, and I, I, that was all I needed. It was coming together. It was coming together. So we spent we spent a long time working, and when we got the email from uh, Big Talk Productions to, to you know get the, the interest of us being on TV, couldn't believe it because. When we created what we were doing, we, we kept saying to ourselves, this is going to get to TV, this, but we didn't know how. And yeah. then to get that email, it was, it was unbelievable. So we had a meeting and the conversation was that they wanted to put our characters into this show for Youngers and um, we were going to be cameo performances each episode, but the conversation would be that we'd also discuss about how we can then do a spin-off show, which right. would be our very own TV show. Okay. So we did Youngers. For so Youngers the, happened. Yeah. Youngers happened. We did that for two years. Yeah. Um, and in the background of things, we were also trying to develop our own. And were you, were you playing your own character from End on the Completely. Wall, the Youngers? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, it was so it was so surreal. And, you know, even when it came to down, like, to the costume and, and every part of, like, what we would do as characters, we were very sort of, like, hands-on and making sure that we didn't want to mess up what we had, had birthed already. And each, even in our small cameo performances between me and the boys, we would make sure that every scene that we did was, like, Put to perfection, yeah. Because we knew that if people could watch us for that for that thirty seconds and fall in love, then they would cry and and scream for the TV companies to, to make our, our own show. So that was the game plan. The strategy was that we had to perfect it. And like many plans, didn't quite work out. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> so um, I, in the background, as we were developing our own TV show, we were 
um, we stopped making online content and we were told from the companies to say uh, to, to keep save our ideas for t the TV world and so and so, so the men them on the wall stuff stopped so we stopped everything on YouTube yeah um, and yeah looking back at it now uh, you know it, it's a hard lesson to learn but it was a good lesson to learn um, so we were gearing up to, to, to pitch our own show and Youngers was struggling to get a third season commissioned and so the TV company said, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to pitch two things at the same time, which yeah. are quite similar. Yeah. The fact that we were already in this one. And I think the, the, there was a change of commissioners at the same time. And once that happens, mm. it's like they have a whole new set yeah, of yeah. ideas and, Different and, and shows that they want to they produce. So um, it, it didn't quite happen for us, unfortunately. What would um, you do differently next time? I think I, think I would have just listened to my, our instincts. I think our instinct was telling us to, throughout the whole course of our journey, uh, do what ourself and our instinct has always been the key to our, our success. So I think I would have kept on making that online content and, yeah. and, and just retaining that online audience because you, you just never know, really. Um, anything can happen. So um, it, it, you know, it didn't happen. And what we did instead is that uh, when we got declined for, for making our own TV show, we'd realised our online audience wasn't there because they'd sort of grown up a little bit. We then went to theatre, we, we took our oh, yeah. man and brand onto Hackney Empire, did a live show for, wow. for two nights. Uh, we started to do school tours, we, did, we went, went into radio, we uh, sold merchandise. We did everything we could to, I guess, build a brand and, and basically monetize as much from it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered this, Percy, yeah. what's, the, what's the difference between acting live and uh, shooting something that you can edit, you know, it, which is harder. Or, yeah. You know, what, uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. I think, I think they both have pros and cons to it. In terms of, um, some people love theatre for these reasons and don't like it for loads of reasons. And same thing with TV and film. I think, when when it comes to performing live, there's a a, a natural reaction that you have with the audience, an instant reaction where you you're in one unison with them. So you get the feedback. So you get you get yeah. the feedback instantly, and so. And, and also you get so much prep time to basically rehearse with, yeah. with your director, with your cast uh, for say two months or a month or however long they give you. Mm. And then you know you go on tour for, for the next mm. however long. So I think as an actor, it's nice because theatre, you, you get to prepare, it sets you up and you go, you go out and perform on stage and every performance you might find something new. But then with TV and film, which I love so much is that uh, again, it's, it's the same principles in terms of teamwork. It's not even just about what I do in front of the camera. It's also what everyone does behind it, you know? Yeah. So doing the mandem stuff and doing all my own stuff behind yeah. camera, I got to appreciate and also learn how to be a team player in yeah. terms of being an actor. So yeah. everything I was doing was actually helping me become the actor that I am today. Um, and also I just love the fact that at the TV and film, you can capture moments and it's, it's always right. going to be saved yeah. and you can watch it in 10 years, 10 years time, yeah. it's always going to be there for you to... to this yeah. is definitely something, you know, I've met a, a few um, actors and uh, producers and, and it's one thing that's really struck me that yeah. is, actually is a consistent message. It's such a team game. Yes. Uh, and yeah. it's yeah. very easy for somebody <laughs> like me who's outside that industry to look in and sort of see the, the actors of course, or perhaps yeah. the director, but actually it's, an, it's, it's a real sort of uh, yeah. team effort. There's yeah. the sound person and the videographer and yeah. the editor and the costume designer. And it, it's, it's what I think is the secret of all the short films that we've done, everything that we've achieved that has, say, hit that a million view mark. For us, it's because of the love that we put into the productions that we work on. It's, yeah. it's about treating everyone as equal and and if I can get the best out of the sound guy or the focus puller or whoever yeah. it is, then I just feel like they're giving me 100%, I'm giving them 100% and we're all, we're all pushing for the same vision. Yeah, yeah. I should pause and thank my crew. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Percy's laughing because we're the only people yeah. in this room. <laughs> it's um, good. I've just got my smartphone, <laughs> my smartphone and my microphone and that's, uh, and that's good. Actually, it's probably a good time to, uh, to do a shout out to uh, Bow and Arrow where... Yes. Uh, we we're actually filming in a different location. We're in the sort of uh, the throes of the uh, coronavirus <laughs> uh, epidemic and out of yeah. an abundance of caution, we've got our um, offices or the place that I usually film closed. So the good people at the digital agency called Bow and Arrow have given us permission to film in their loft in Soho 
square outside, beautiful day, very kind. So if you hear sort of bumps in the background, it's yeah. people um, very busily thinking up new digital strategies. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks to Bow and Arrow. I'll link them below, by the way. Uh, so um, interesting. So out of the out, out of the ashes of Mandan on the wall, uh, the wall of comedy uh, yeah. erupts. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And this becomes a platform for others. Oh right? yeah, yeah. But it was it was so scary because when it was erupting as an idea in our heads, it was like we had been working on this thing, Mandan Wall, for five years. Like to go out and create something completely new and, and put our attention to something different. It was it was so. Um, scary for us to take that, that leap of faith and that risk, but I think everything in, inside ourselves was telling us to do that. You know, it was um, it was actually an easier choice because we just knew it was the right thing to do. Um, so on our journey, because of everything that we learned from TV stuff that I sort of mm -hmm. spoke about as well, and and kind of feeling a little bit jaded, but it was an experience anyway. It was we wanted to take our knowledge and our skill sets and and give it back to people. That was the, the reason for the wall of comedy. And so the wall of comedy is a very popular yeah. YouTube channel. I think half a million subscribers. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it below. Go have a look. It's really awesome. Can yeah. you describe it, uh, Percy, for people who may may not have seen yeah, it? Yeah, sure. Um, the the platform, the wall of comedy, is is a platform that is there for comedians and entertainers mm -hmm. and. What we love to do is to help nurture their ideas and basically be the bridge before, uh, from, from grassroots level and, and to where they're, wherever they go to in terms of mainstream TV or film and, and those things there. But Wall of Comedy is a platform for people to watch content on there and also for us to help nurture content creators. Right, so it's, it's effectively a stage and there are a few of these in different sort of verticals on, yeah. on YouTube where different people come in, they do their production. You. You provide the uh, the set, the equipment, yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. editing. So we, we, we are effectively our own t TV network. Right. We, we commission people's ideas or yeah. we produce yeah. ideas ourselves in-house uh, as a team or we might just license some content that, you know, someone has, has done it themselves already, everything is, is there packaged, we, we then just upload it on our, on our channel and just give it the full exposure it deserves. And I think that's the amazing thing, you, you know, you go there, you see fresh talent, fresh ideas, yes. lots yeah. of variety, yes. uh, yeah. always yeah. developing. Completely. And now you're getting into uh, defining your own stuff, so yes. t tell me about that and where, where is it all heading? Yeah, um, so because of the ethos of Wall of Comedy and what we're trying to do, I think I think new talent is always um, something we, we, we always need new talent. We always need fresh faces, not just in front of camera, but as we've been talking about behind camera too. So because we take a lot of risk on, on whoever comes through our doors, I think that set us up to work with a lot more uh, branded companies a lot more effectively and also TV. Because I think in terms of the transition with TV at the moment when it comes to online and, and, and you know people watching TV, uh, we're able to be a talent incubator so we can help uh, you know, TV companies or whoever we're working with to uh, to buy into new talent. You know, yeah. give that give the new talent a voice, um, test them out with with the audience, test out their that their their you know their, their skill set, but also test out their, the format. If it works, then amazingly we can then you know traffic that those people straight up to TV. And I yeah. think that's where. We're at now working with Channel Four, sort of uh, like a launch pad. So Channel Four. Yeah. So in right. in terms of with Channel Four, we we um, uh, last year successfully signed a development deal with them. So we congratulations. Can, thank you so much. So they want us to give them three drama entertainment, uh, three three drama shows and three entertainment shows, and also working closely with them about how we can um, introduce them to new talent. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, such a forward-thinking uh, channel. Channel Four is. Um, you know, I always hear lots of stories of innovation in the industry yeah, and, and yeah. often it involves uh, Channel 4, so big shout out to Channel 4, thank you for that. And uh, you also men mentioned uh, branded content. I know yeah. you've done some work with Foot Asylum, I think. Yeah, Can you tell yeah. us about that? Absolutely. Um, so with the birth of the Wall of Comedy and, and our passion for, for creating content, we then set up the Wall of Productions um, because we yeah, just wanted to get into that and focus into content a lot more from that side of things. And uh, we, through our talent working with Foot Asylum on a sort of like a consistent basis, we started to have conversations with Foot Asylum also and said, hey, look, you know, we can also help you guys out in terms of ideas, in terms of content and, and production. And so we now work with them quite closely where we produce a lot of their YouTube content. Yeah. So 
Uh, I think 18 months ago they were on 4,000 subscribers and now they're on 336,000 today. So, so let's pause on that. 4,000 yeah. subscribers yeah. to 336,000. Yeah. Um, so foot, of, foot Asylum, go to, the, go to the channel, I'll link that below. <laughs> if there's another brand out there who's just sort of woken up and thought, okay, I'll have a bit of that, how yeah. do they get hold of you uh, to uh, Oh, they could um, contact us, yeah, just uh, through the Wall of Comedy uh, or my own personal um, perso at thewallofcomedy.com, that's my email. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we're always open to working with new people all the time. Excellent. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's an amazing story and it's shooting off in all sorts of diff different directions. Thank you. How, what do you. how do you see the, the future, you know, five, three years, five years down the track? What, what does the wall of look like? I think um, yeah. if I look back at everything we've done, I think um, everything is about, for us, building a community. Yeah. Um, a community that houses talent and also an audience and so we want to we want to put and pull all those things together that we do so well and so um, I think we've had a, uh, a I say a, a rocky journey in terms of uh, searching for su sustainability in terms of uh, platforms and other social media platforms in terms of um, our content so we want to have our own platform one day yeah. and where that will house our own yeah our own ideas our own content our own talent um, all sorts of things basically and um, I think with the success of all the bits and pieces that we've done we've always looked at them as case studies mm -hmm. and, and looked at them as like this is the potential of what you know these things can do and if we're I guess if someone can sort of look into what we're doing and back us a bit more the potential what we, we've done so far can be so it can be huge if we scale up you take it into different take it to different things yeah like you know with the short uh, we've done a lot of short films in the last 10 years and uh, even just looking at those short films and what they've done in terms of the success for a guy called Ratman who he's gone on to do a film called Blue Story, we did yeah. something called Shower Story with him and we both produced it together with, with Jovan as well. Um, it's been incredible to see what a piece of content can do for a person's career and, right. and that's broken, you know, he's, he's now doing amazing things. So we want to, yeah, do the same thing with the short films and also then take that to feature films and, and, and break new barriers within that market and yeah, wherever our content sits, we, we want to be there. Well, well, watch this space. Uh, there's probably some people watching or listening yeah. uh, that are thinking about getting into um, production or acting or the creative arts or even founding a business. You're actually all of those rolled yeah. into one. What advice would you have for them? Uh, uh, that's a very good question. I, I probably would say um, a few things. I would say perseverance has been probably my, my biggest thing, I think. Along the journey, uh, it's, there's been a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of ups and downs. And so uh, the fact that we didn't quit l allowed us to learn the reason for why we're going through that process and get to the other side. And because of that, you know, there, was, there were great things on the other side that we just we couldn't see at the time. But, you know, if you, if you hold out and don't quit, you, you can get there. Um, I'll say uh, the people that you work with, it's I can't sit here today and say that I did it by myself. Absolutely not. I, I've got an amazing, amazing team, and I think you know we're all products of our environment. So I feel like if we are able to find our tribe of people who yeah. who believe in the vision, um, you know, I'm very thankful for a lot of people because we we worked for a lot of years for nothing, and and finally you know we have something to give back. And um, I think lastly, when it comes to just creating content, I think it's always about authenticity. Yeah. I think it's always about trusting your your gut instinct and. You know, who we are as people is our own USP. And so there's things that I can do that I, I know that no one else can do and, and vice versa. There's things I can't do that other people can do. And, and there's probably stories that I can't tell that other people can tell. So I think if you're probably watching this now and you're wanting to get into content creating, whether it's, you know, YouTube or TV or film, it's it's just about I think starting as well executing. Yeah, yeah. That re that really resonates with me <laughs> as well. So uh, persistence, perseverance, find your tribe and authenticity. That's, uh, uh, Percy, look, you you you're just a wonderful combination of uh, creative talent, entrepreneurial uh, determination, and, uh, and and business savvy. Uh, I think you're doing amazing things. This is a Thank brand you. new format. You know. Yeah. I think we'll see much more of this sort of thing, uh, the wall of watch out uh, for, for more of this stuff. Percy Escott, thank you very thank much you for so joining us. Thank you so much, Craig. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>